What's up guys, Ramen King here, and I'm gonna be doing a Ramen's Thoughts video on Valkyria Chronicles. Yes, the reason I'm making this is because Valkyria Chronicles 4 has been announced, my boys. And yes, I am extremely, extremely happy for this. Because, a few things. For those who don't know, I am a massive Valkyria fan. I wasn't a fan of Valkyria Chronicles 2 or Revolutions that much, but they were still respective games in this franchise and I still played them. Even though I kind of dropped Valkyria Chronicles Revolu Valkyria Revolutions like a bad habit. But anyways, on to, any, on to this video. This one's going to be talking about um, Valkyria Chronicles 4 being announced. And another anime thing, which a lot of people can already tell from the tone of my voice. It's going to be an anime that a lot of people are interested in, a lot of people aren't, what, whatever. So, here we go. So, Valkyrie Chronicles 4 is, well, it recently got announced like two days ago, um, two days ago for me, which I'm recording this on the 21st, it was announced on the 19th of this month. So, yeah, that's kind of a thing, which is interesting because I thought the series would be dead after Revolution came out and people kind of threw that back in the garbage can. But no. Uh, Sega is bringing the series back again, which is kind of interesting and kind of weird because I really thought that they were going to remake the other two games, not bring another game into the franchise, which people are already slightly iffy on Valkyria Chronicles now because of Revolutions, but I think this is also just to make up for what happened with Revolutions, of Revolutions being kind of a garbage fire. But, um... Not, not to say that the other Valkyrie Chronicle games were bad, don't get me wrong, those games are amazing. Except for 2 Story, which kind of teased that, oh, you can use a Valkyria, but you actually can't. Which, I don't fucking know why. But anyways, back on to what I was talking about. So it seems like this, an the, not this anime, this game seems to be taking place around Valkyrie Chronicles 1, or at least after that, from what, uh, <clears throat> what the description was talking about. Um, apparently it's going to have something to do with Valkyrie Chronicles 1, from what I can tell, but it's going to have a whole entirely new cast. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to read off some of the stuff that it says for the key features for Valkyrie Chronicles 4, and you tell me something. So, here we go. A coming-of-age story in a time of war, Valkyrie Chronicles 4 takes place in the same time frame as the original Valkyrie Chronicles, but focuses on a whole new cast of main characters. The players will take command of an eager young commander, Cloud Wallace, engineer and heavy weapons uh, extraordinaire, uh, Riley Miller, hothead Darson Raz, ice cold ace sniper Kai Shrun, I don't know how to say her last name, uh, and, and, and more. Together they will experience the painful realities of war, but uh, will, bonds, <clears throat> will bonds of squad ease, friendship survive the frozen battlefield. So, this is basically taking place in the same time frame as Valkyria Chronicles 1, but we don't know exactly when. Is it going to be when the Valkyria was uh, was first revealed with Alyssa? Uh, uh, Alicia, I can't say her fucking name right, but you know who I'm talking about. I'll show this photo on screen. But, is it going to be taking place during that, or is it going to be taking place somewhere around um, near the end of Valkyria Chronicles 1? Because, to be frank, there, doesn't, there didn't seem to be any kind of issues or anything... Um, after Valkyrie Chronicles 1 ended, unless you count Valkyrie Chronicles 2, which we don't want to remember 2, trust me, let's not. Um, but with this information, when you think about it, this could be a possibility that um, the cast from Valkyrie Chronicles 3 could come in, because think about it, they also were in the same time frame as Valkyrie Chronicles 1. So it is possible for Valkyrie Chronicles 1 and 2 to tie into Valkyrie Chronicles 4 when you think about it. So there's that. So on to more of the key features. So it looks like from what it says, it's called the Next Generation Blitz Battle System. Uh, the part overhead turn-based strategy, part RPG, and part real-time third-person shooter Blitz System returns to the battlefield. New features include explosive new cla uh, the, an explosive new class called the Grenader. Uh, numerous offensive and defensive battleship support options, chances for a unit to have a last stand action before death, and more. Plus, the f uh, plus fight the Imperial threat and more units on a larger scale map than ever before. So this is actually pretty interesting 
even though they don't show any screenshots of the new maps that's actually pretty interesting that it's gonna make battles longer and more strategic which I like to be a personally honest I like it I'm going to very very much like it <laughs> and um, I was talking to a friend about this and he was also interested in what they meant by um, some more support class and last stands so I'm thinking with last stands, maybe it could be like this, um, you know, like in Valkyrie Chronicles 1, your units can die on the battlefield. So something similar to that could actually work, which is interesting to me, but I think that also might be a little bit of an issue because the last stand wouldn't really matter much because a lot of people will just reset, uh, reset uh, and then go through the map again. I mean, you can do that unless the game will lock you out of doing that because We've done that so many times, it's not even funny. Although, Valkyrie Chronicles 2 and 3 did take out the whole party member dies and he stays dead. Valkyrie Chronicles 2 did have the option where it's like, well, not option for them to die, but if they, if we didn't save them in a certain amount of time, they get injured and they stay out of battle for like X amount of time because we can't have teenagers dying on us, apparently. Um, Valkyrie Chronicles 3, we, none of them could die. They could only be sent back and they couldn't be, fight for a little bit. So there's that. Now on to the next thing, which is the Canvas Aesthetics. The series' signature hand-drawn visual style is back, an overhaul to the newest generation. Inspired by the watercolor comparisons and the Canvas graphics engine, blends visual elements of reality and imagination to create an expressive world filled with colorful emotions. Watch the journey as Squad E unfolds the interactive painting. So for those who don't know, like Valkyrie Chronicles 1 had this, and it looked very clean my boy it was clean as hell so I'm kind of interested how it would look on a next-gen console even though we do have Akira Chronicles 1 that's already remastered for the PS4 I'm kind of interested in how this is gonna look um, compared to that so there's that also in which I am very happy about uh, and on to the next part return of the legendary composer the Ill uh, illustrious, illustri uh, illustrious Hitoshi Sakimoto, uh, original composer for Valkyrie Chronicles series and countless other emotional epics, returned to provide sweeping orchestral music for the game, or soundtrack for the game. That right there, that, oh, if it's anything like Valkyrie Chronicles 1 and 3, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Now, there is a little bit of a thing that which a lot of people might be a little iffy about, Here's this part right here. In Japan, the standard edition of Valkyrie Chronicles 4 for PlayStation 4 will cost... Well, that's actually just... It's just all about the cost of the game and... Uh, and a 10th anniversary mem memorial pack, limited edition, limited edition, and first print copies of the game will include additional an additional mission, and here are the details. So, it's just explaining, like, the um, limited edition version of the PS4 version, where this is where it took me by surprise. You get a copy of the game, uh... A product code for an additional story downloadable content joint operation with squad 7 this is why I'm making this video which is awesome as well a story in which squad 7 from the original Valkyrie Chronicles Chronicles appears by playing this down downloadable con by download uh, by playing this downloadable content the Elderwise operated by Welkin Gunther as well as Al uh, Alicia Melchior Largo Potter and Bridget Ro Rosie Stark will be available in the main story of Akira Chronicles 4. Additionally, Isar Gunther can be acquired as a unit for the first time in the series. Let oh, so this is taking place before Isara's death in Valkyrie Chronicles uh, 1, which I think is a good thing because it doesn't accidentally spoil anything if people jump into this game instead of playing four, uh, 4. It jumps into 4 and not play 1 and it doesn't confuse people. Um, you also get the soundtrack for the game, and you also get, um, you also get, um, the illustration book, which is filled with pretty much everything that's been done by, um, everything that's been done by the staff that makes Valkyrie Chronicles. And the first purchase, uh, also, if you get the PS4 version, the first print purchase bonus is also, you get, um, you get a click, you get a, um, Primitive Special Tactics mission that you 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 go through that and then you get Eddie Nelson, uh, Eddie Nelson for from the original Valkyrie Chronicles unit to use in the main story, 
which I find that interesting that it seems like they keep bringing her back in every Valkyria game. Um, it seems like she's a fan favorite, which is pretty interesting. So, for those who don't really keep up with Japanese voice actors, I'm going to read off some of the voice actors that they actually have for, um, for some of the cast members. Now, I'm going to go from basically the main character and so on and so forth, and I'm going to go through that. Now, this is the interesting part, especially for some of these voice actors, because it seems like some of them might be slightly new. Now, for those who ever actually watched Steven Universe in Japanese, apparently, the main character, who's played by Ryosuke Kanemoto, it does the voice for Lars Fryman, the Lion, and Ronaldo from Steven Universe. Next character, because I'm not going to talk about uh, Rayleigh, Mu uh, Rayleigh Muller th that much, but I'm going to talk about her for a little bit as well, for, so you guys have an idea of what this is going to be like. Which is pretty interesting in my opinion, but whatever. So, uh, Riley Miller's voice actor is the voice actor, or Japanese voice actor, for Nagisa from Assassination Classroom, uh, Chiho from The Devil is a Part-Timer, and Harley from Fairy Fencer F, so that's interesting. So, at, at the very least, they have ex people who are experienced in this field doing the voices. But then you've got Kai Shrolin, who is the vo whose voice actor is Maya Sakam uh, Sakamoto, who's done the voices for characters from the Dot, Dot Hack Legend of the Twilight, um, Bamboo Blade. She's the voice of CL from Black Butler, and the list goes on because she's got a long laundry list of characters she's done. Most notably was you know Black Butler. And also Seven Deadly Sins, and uh, oddly enough, she apparently did Japanese Barbie. So yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> and um, also Aerith and Lightning from Final Fantasy, and I guess from Persona. So yeah, she's also got a laundry list. So I'm gonna, I'm kind of glad there's experienced voice actors who are gonna be doing this one. So it's not gonna be as weird for me because I usually play these games in English and Japanese however I feel like so I kind of want both to be kind of balanced out so there's that now back on the pretty much what else I could actually say I can read the description for some of these characters Cloud Wallace is the protagonist of the game and apparently he's the first lieutenant and is serious passionate and a caring commander uh, Riley is a second lieutenant tactician or technician um, she's positive and cheerful and ambitious, and she pushes herself, pu pushes her, uh, pushes towards without, f without fear of failure. And she's also apparently a grenader, so that's going to be interesting trying to out, trying out the grenader class. Next up, you have, well, Raz, who's a Darkson, and for those who don't know what Darksons are, Darksons, they don't have last names because you had to play Valkyrie Chronicles 1 and 3 to kind of get the idea. Basically, they were uh, basically the race of people who don't have last names because of some shit that happened in Valkyrie Chronicle 1 and 2 and 3. So you're going to play those games for the whole synopsis on that because I don't want to go too deep into that one. Um, so yeah, basically you can tell who a Darkson is because of what they wear. Basically, if they wear like a uh, headband or something of that nature with a specific symbol on it, which I could probably show like a screenshot of one of them. Uh, basically, that's a Darkson, or they have, like, dark blue hair. They're considered Darksons, and they're usually considered outcasts by, uh, most of the world because of some shit that happened in Vecure Chronicles 1 and 3. So, yeah, that's really all we know about the game so far, is it's gonna be bringing back a lot of great mechanics from Vecure Chronicles 1, but the thing I'm interested in is I'm interested in what are they gonna do about orders, because, as you know, with Vecure Chronicles, they always have the order system, and I'm kind of curious if, how, if they're going to add any new orders to the game. Um, any new orders? Are they going to have special skills like in Valkyria Chronicles 3, um, where there's like the whole Valkyria mode? Uh, Imka having like her. Um, I think she had like her sword mode. I can't remember too much from Valkyria Chronicles 3 that much uh, without accidentally spoiling something. So, yeah, there's that. But I think that's all I can really say on this topic for Valkyria Chronicles 4. 
for those who are wondering if you live in Japan or you want to buy the game or buy the game, the game comes out for PS4 on March 21st of 2018 and on the Switch in summer 2018. So there is, and this game also will launch in the US in 2018 as well. We don't have a specific release date. But I will keep you guys updated on any more news when it comes to Valkyrie Chronicles 4. Because I'm actually hyped for this shit. On to the next one, which is the other news I wanted to cover a little bit in this video, which is Boku no Hero now having a set release uh, soon. For those who don't know, Boku no Hero is, is a superhero anime that kind of took the world by storm, apparently. But I personally love the show. But yeah, it took people by storm. This show became pretty much, in my in my personal opinion, one of the few animes I will probably continue watching for the long for the long run. I have been reading the manga, so yes, I do know what happens later on. But if you spoil anything in the comment sections, I will delete your comment because I don't want people in the comment sections getting spoiled for anything that happens in the manga. So I'm not going to cover anything in the manga. But I can tell you that apparently Boku no Hero will be released, or at least Boku no Hero Season 3 will be released in um, April of 2018. Now, I don't know where this is going to follow up at. From what I remember, I can't remember too much from Season 2 because I didn't really watch too much of Season 2. But from what I can tell, this is going to be a crazy ride, especially for what happens later on. Because, you know, Deku is starting to get used to... Uh, one for all full cow and so on and so forth i don't want to go too deep into details but yeah this next season is going to be kind of crazy especially for those who personally have seen the sh seen the manga itself you know what's going to happen but i do want to say a few things when it comes to boku no hero it is a fantastic show with great music but it didn't have one issue i did notice when it uh, noticed with the anime and the manga itself and that was probably, well, some of the supporting cast is kind of bleh. I'm not going to lie. Like, some characters I did not care about. The only characters I really cared about was Earphone Jack, Creation Girl, Yoravity, um, Deku, Bakugo, Todoroki, Kirishima, so on and so forth. Uh, people are going to give me a lot of shit for not saying frog, uh, Froggy. I'm not going to lie. She's cool, but I wouldn't. Because of the doujin and hentai community uh, going nuts with her, yeah, no, <laughs> I would not bang that chick. Um, I'm more of a um, creation girl fan, so uh, yeah, mama, but whatever. Um, what else can I really talk about with Boku no Hero? I guess I should probably give my own personal opinions of the first two seasons of Boku no Hero. I can say for a fact this show is pretty faithful to the manga. Even though they're kind of just animating the manga, essentially, which I think is usually a good thing to do because if the manga is popular, you can always animate that and don't pull a Black Clover and, well, make your main character annoying as all hell who continuously screams over and over. So, yeah, that's kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, I don't like Black Clover, just like everybody else in the goddamn community. But yeah, I will say the music is amazing. The visuals themselves look stunning for an anime of this year. Not gonna lie, there's not been that many animes that I actually was really interested in this this current season. Uh, the only animes I was interested in was maybe animes from like previously that I didn't get to watch, like uh, Made in the Abyss, so on. So, uh, Made in the Abyss. I'm trying to go back to watching uh, Recovery of an MMO Junkie. And so on and so forth. But I don't know how I'm going to feel about that after I finish watching some of the shows. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to get a lot of shit. But I was not a huge fan of the first episode of, of Re Recovery of an MMO Junkie. Just because of kind of how it was. I felt like at first it just didn't leave a good impression on me. Because I kind of had a feeling I already knew where this anime was going. Without reading any of the source material as a whole. So there's that. But anyways, back to praising Boku no Hero as being one of my favorite animes of 2017 and 18. Um, the music's amazing, the characters are very interesting and start actually getting fleshed out more, which I feel like a lot of shonen animes don't really do anymore. Like, you have Dragon Ball where a lot of characters are already established, except for the ones from during like the tournament arc with Khalifla and, I don't know how to say it, like Khalifla and Kale or whatever the hell their names are. 
uh, I don't know, like characters like that I just never had an interest in because it always seemed like they were OP as shit, which Boku no Hero get, ugh, Boku no Hero seems to get right. No one in this show is safe, and it gives you the message of a few things which I find kind of interesting. Uh, the anime kind of gives out that message that no one is invincible. No one. Uh, people will probably say like, Oh, but this character from the manga that hasn't been shown yet, but yet people will spoil the shit out of it in the comment sections, is OP. Well, yeah, but he got his ass kicked. Let's just say that. He got his ass kicked, so whatever. But no one in this anime is overpowered. Earphone Jack is not overpowered, but she has a strong will. Deku is strong, but he's not godlike either. Because of the fact that with Deku, if he breaks his arm too many times, he could lose all pa lose any feeling or any he could lose his arms essentially um there isn't really any known weakness for um froggy so i guess you could say she's pretty good i can't really say too much without spoiling shit because you know some quirks you don't get to know their weaknesses until later so yeah that's a thing but, um, but yeah, that's just how I feel about Boku no Hero. It's a great show with a minor flaws, in my opinion. They are very minor, minor nitpicks. But I think the show will continue on being what, what it is. It's a great show with great characters. Also, showing the fact that not every character is overpowered, everybody has their limits, and so on and so forth. Unlike most shonen animes, looking at you, Bleach, uh, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, so on and so forth, where characters are quote-unquote overpowered as fuck, and they just don't have interest. But anyways, I think that's all I want to say about Boku no Hero. It's a great show, great music. That's one of the things that I've always been a nitpick of, of music and artwork. That's always been my nitpick, and that's why I'm not a big fan of One Piece, because I don't really like the artwork, that st art style. You could say the same for, like, um... You could say the same for um, Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon, so on and so forth. Whatever. But yeah, that's just that's just it. So this is my first Ramen Thoughts video. This video might have been a little jumbled up with different topics and shit like that going in and out. But the sad thing is, I couldn't talk too much about Boku no Hero. I will make a separate video specifically talking about Boku no Hero. Uh, manga and anime because I do want to talk a bit more about this show But I had to specifically talk about the anime itself as the art Like as I mentioned before like the whole artwork anime and just how the story progressed and how no one's overpowered and Even the villains are actually likable in this show except for Shigaraki, but yeah, there's a reason for that but um, Shigaraki, Hero Stain, so on and so forth, other characters that will be shown later. So yeah, you're gonna have to watch, read the manga, or watch the anime. But I will make another video talking about that later on as the series pro progresses. And from what I've been told by a few friends who've actually been watching other people's videos, apparently there's gonna be 400 total chapters of Boku no Hero. So it looks like we'll be in for the long run because we're only on chapter 160. So yeah, that's gonna be a thing. But without further ado, guys, I'm the Ramen King, signing up for another time, another place, and another year. This is my first Ramen Thoughts video, so please let me know how I did. I'm sorry if this video was was about as bad as my Cyber Dimension review. I'm still learning on how to do um, videos like this where I'm not playing a game and talking over it or whatever, not doing Let's Play videos. I want to do stuff like this in the future because I want to give you guys my own personal opinion on shows and not have it come off as being pretentious or a dick or whatever. I want to give my own personal honest opinions without being, well, fanboyish. Like I mentioned before, Boku no Hero is a great show. It has minor nitpicks from me, but besides that, I think it's a fantastic show when it comes to the whole superhero shonen genre and really doesn't even feel like um, really doesn't even feel like it's uh, shonen at all. It just feels like superhero action show and that's a feeling that not many shonens can get out of me where it feels like it's not a shonen it feels like its own thing with the whole superhero aspect also hashtag team bakugo i don't give a fuck what anybody says but um yeah like i said before not many shows can make me feel like this and if you have if you guys have any 
topics for me to talk about, uh, let me know and I can put them in my next Ramen Stance video. Though I've mentioned before, I've mentioned this time and time and time again. Um, I, I will not talk about tragedies. Um, there are just some things I cannot talk about because in my own... In my opinion, I just can't talk about these without being emotional as crap. Um, there's just no way I can do those without getting very, very emotional about it. Especially when it comes to... Um, when it comes to animes, I take certain things very seriously and... Also, I, I just can't talk... I don't want to talk about tragedies. I can't talk about people who've passed, but... I do want to say one last thing before I end this video off, and I know somebody's going to say, Oh, you're just padding the video out. Fuck you. Um, I do want to say um, there was one thing, and I will. this is the only time I'll probably ever talk about this, or talk about um, any kind of like tragedy or sadness or anything of that nature on this Raman's Thoughts thing I've been doing. Um, for those who don't know, the voice actor... Um, the voice actor for Bulma from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, uh, so on and so forth, Hiromi, uh, Tsuyo, Tsuyo, I can't say her last name and I, I very much apologize for that. Um, I don't want to butcher her name, but I'm just going to call her, uh, Bulma's Japanese voice actor, uh, recently passed away, um, last week and... That was one of the reasons why I, I, I couldn't keep a straight face when I was streaming because I kept having that in my mind. But all I can say is rest in peace and thank you for everything you've done for the anime community. And I, I, I wish the best for your colleagues, your loved ones, family, and so on and so forth. I know this is like a week late to talk about this. I just couldn't find the proper way to say it without... Without... Um, Without, without feeling just like a sack of shit, because I know someone's going to say, oh, you're getting monetization off of someone's passing? No, this video, matter of fact, all my videos of as of now have all been demonetized any fucking ways by me personally, and that's something I didn't want to do at first, but especially, I'm only going to do it for this Ramen Thoughts video because of the, the, what happened. I just don't want to have, feel any guilt from that, and honestly, that I'm just, I don't know, I just don't want anything like that being like, oh, you're making money off of tragedies like a new, like every other news channel. No, I'm not doing that, just no, no. But anyways, guys, I'm the Ramen King, signing out for another time, another place, and another year. Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next episode of Whatever I'm Making. Until next time, guys, peace. And also, to Hirumi, thank you for everything. Peace.